Hiya! You might remember this as the deposition core, where we put a gas or a liquid into this central location to solidify into a solid, which is a terrible way of saying that, to bring down the, liquid, uh, bring down the temperature of this little enclosure. Uh, it was pointed out that, eh, you know, this is kind of a cheat, and it is kind of a cheat using the ice crusher, because the ice crusher will uh, bring the temperature of the water up to around zero degrees Celsius uh, as default. But you don't have to do that. If you live in a uh, colder climate, uh, then everybody has done this at least once in their life. You bring a cup of really hot water outside, and you throw it up in the air as violently as possible, and it just sort of turns into something. It turns into like snow or vapor or dust. Well, it actually turns into tiny little solid particles because it is deposizing. I don't know what the verb ter what the verb of deposition is. Maybe it's just deposition. Whatever. And this is because on a macro level, we look at these reactions and they don't seem particularly violent to us. Rain doesn't seem that violent to us. Snow doesn't seem that violent. Boiling can sometimes seem violent, but not really. But on a microscopic level, it is incredibly violent. What you have are these fast-moving molecules, these hot molecules, coming in contact with slow-moving molecules. And they're, the interaction between the two energy states is what shoves things around. Sometimes, especially in high school, they would say that they bump into each other. But most of the time, they don't ever physically touch. There is, I think, the weak nuclear force, which sort of makes everything repulsive to everything else. It's sort of like the dating scene, but on an atomic level. So when the hot molecule comes near the cold molecule, the hot molecule shoves the cold molecule, gives it more energy, transfers heat to it and the hot molecule slows down, and that turns it into a liquid. And if there's more difference between them, it shoves it even harder, transferring more heat into the cold molecule, and the hot molecule will then turn into a solid. If that's done quickly enough, we call it deposition. That is turning from straight from a gas to a solid. The other way would be called sublimation. I remember Back in the early 90s, when I was in high school, they used to tell me that sublimation is what both terms are called. That if you go from a solid to a gas, or from a gas to a, a, a solid, it was both called sublimation. It is not. One is called sublimation, the, the other one is called deposition. Two names that make sense to have two names because um, we are human and we like naming everything. So let's go back in time to when I started this world and we won't have crap on it, and we will build this thing. But we will do one change, one little change, one annoying change, but one change nonetheless. We won't be using ice crushers. Screw those ice crushers, we'll be using something else completely. We may not even use that. We may even use uh, solar power, but the RTG is a really great shortcut that removes, look how pretty that is, that removes a lot of annoyances that are in this game and annoyances are annoying. Oh, look at that. We have a perpetually turning. That's that's actually a neat little visual bug. Look at that. Cool. Uh, that probably happened because um, fluid got stuck in here, and this is actually technically a solid, but not really a solid. And then those two uh, ice cubes, uh, ice nuggets formed. Anyways, uh, I'll stop talking. I'll go, go back to the beginning, and let's let's go. Now, like with any good industrial process, we start with a great big fucking funnel. We're going to do that with a hopper. Jetpack on. And we'll just put it in the sky somewhere so we don't have to deal with shit. Which way is the sun rising? Sunrise is kind of at a, a weird angle. We actually have to wait for the game to stop crashing. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by a game who uses the public as its playtesters, Every good industrial process starts with a funnel. We're going to use a hopper Jetpack on. for that. Let's turn up the thrusters so they don't drift around. And we will stick the hopper over here in the sky just so we don't have to deal with nothing floating around. There. Got the hopper. It's built out. Now we need to make it airtight. So we're going to grab some frames. Oopsie my doodle. 
Oh, okay, so the, uh, I forgot this, but this is a, a good lesson here. The hopper does not lock to uh, a particular grid square reference, so let's put these down here if I stop bobbing around like a moron. Now, the hopper is technically solid, it's technically not solid, so this is not a solid substance, but underneath the scaffolding is considered solid, but I do believe gases can pass through it, so uh, it's best to encircle it with frames. Now we will grab some chutes, and I will likewise, let's turn on night vision here so we can see what we're doing, I will likewise extend the chutes well past the bottom of the of where a frame would normally be and we'll put one frame inside where the hopper is and we just need to do that for now we don't need to make it look nice so because we're just showing how this is going to be built this may not be necessary but i'm going to do this anyways because i do believe gases can escape through there now we need some kind of reaction chamber i'm going to use windows because they're the best way to see into things there, now we have a reaction chamber. We'll close up the reaction chamber, or at least the top of it for now. And then we'll need some way to getting fluids in there. Now, you could use drains, you could use the active drain, or you can break a liquid pipe. Liquid pipes still don't work properly if you're relying solely on liquid pipes. Your liquids, uh, as they transition between gas and liquids, will disappear for some reason. I don't know why it could just be a calculation error. So we're just going to use good old-fashioned vents. And passive vents are much better than this new, well, the new stub that gets put on the end of, uh, of pipes. For some reason, the, uh, the vents allow more gas to go in and out of it. And we'll go right to the top here. And we will try to remember which fucking key it is to turn it around. Too many games have too many different keys. There. And uh, some might say, oh, you only need one uh, vent in space, but these are still valves. The more vents you have, the more gas you can uh, pass in and out. Now, we're using such small amounts of gas that that's not going to really matter. But what it does mean is that uh, a pipe will drain much more quickly than normal. And we're going to use normal uninsulated pipes, simply because that's all we need. And it's kind of hard to maneuver because we are up high and for some reason we don't really have a very good max ceiling on these on our jetpacks and we'll put the windows facing inside just so we can see our tubes a little better now we can do you know, any kind of weird interaction that we want to be able to communicate the temperature of this inside space with the outside space but let's just simply stick a bunch of pipes on the end here and then we put radiators on each of these and you want to be careful to use the kits because these old radiators down here where they're actually the full-size radiators don't work properly anymore you put them on and they won't work properly anymore. these are the depreciated ones that and they just don't work let's point them down so we can look at them and we'll command the sun to rise as if we are some god okay so here we go we've got our basic little design here. We've got vents for our gas to come out. We've got uh, a sort of enclosure for them to, the gas to come in and deposize, deposition into a solid. And we've got a place for our solid to be picked back up. That's all we need for the reactor. And it is a re this is sort of a reactor. This is where the reaction happens. It is a reactor chamber. Not really. Okay, so we'll seal this all up like so. Then we want a space to warm up. Let's make it a little bigger than last time. There, now we have an enclosure. And because we're not going to be using the ice crusher, we need a source of energy. And we will just go for the sun here. And it doesn't have a very good path. Let's reset the... It never gets very high, and it just sort of does this path right here. So, eh, that's going to be hard to absorb a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, energy out of. But... The good thing is, we don't need a lot of energy, so let's put down uh, some radiators. There. 
Now, we are going to use these radiators to pick up some, th 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 some thermal forcing. And we actually can't see how much energy they're absorbing because there are no water in it right now. But there will be water at some point. And this is just so we can melt the ice into a liquid or whatever. But now that we're committing to using just light, solar energy, like something that we can produce naturally to melt our ice, we'll need a second reaction chamber. And we can easily do that down here because all we're doing is dumping the solids out and turning them into a uh, fluid or a gas. More than likely it's going to be a, a fluid at this point. It's not strictly near it's not strictly necessary to vacuum this chamber out for it to work properly, but we will because it'll just make it easier. Uh, but we are going to have to put an airlock in here. Now that we have this place nicely drained out, we will need liquid drains. And we just need unpowered drains. Don't need a bunch of them because all we're going to be doing is scooping up uh, the liquid water that will be melted in this place after the solids jump in here. Now, it would probably be best if we put a non-reactive substance in here, like a little bit of nitrogen, so that there'll constantly be some kind of heat level in here, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now we're going to need uh, pipes to pipe the whole thing up, and we're going to pipe them up to that thing up there. The jetpack was being super ineffectual, so I had to use walls. Iron walls are about the only ones you can use because iron walls are the only ones that are solid to stand on when unfinished. All the other walls where they have the one line across it, you can fall in between those lines. The iron wall, type 1, 2, 3, or 4, is solid in this configuration and you can walk on it and it only costs you one iron and then you just build uh, ladders. Here we are with the semi-finished product. This is the a simplified version. And this is all the stuff that you need. The hopper, the reaction chamber, the room you want to warm up. We have two monitoring stations, one for the outside temperature, one for the reactor temperature. We have the water from our liquid reaction chamber down there, our warming chamber down there. Coming up in here, we have a little switch here that will uh, shunt the liquid into the gas uh, main here and then that will shove it into our reactor and then our reactor will disposition di dispose into a solid get picked up dump our solids into this room which will hopefully uh, melt and turn into uh, liquid water now we need to prime this system up oh first what we need to do is we need to go back up there to our radiators here because these radiators have an interesting thing about them if we just leave them exposed to the outside air here they will automatically try to cool stuff down to the ambient temperature they have if we look at it here oh, we can't see anything because there's no water in there but they will convect all of the heat in their system out but if we cover them in windows and we put just a little bit of gas in there it'll be able to start absorbing fairly large amounts of uh, solar energy. So we're going, to, uh, we're going to build that up now. Okay, now we have up here done up a little bit more. We've got the, the radiators pointing at the sun. Doesn't look like there's any warming happening at all inside the cylinder, and that's because I forgot to close the bottom up. That was pretty dumb of me. Uh, do we have a little bit of warming? We have a tiny bit of warming. There we go. So let's get down to the bottom here, and then we'll spawn in the thing everybody starts with is a little bit of water. Water has one T, not two, and then we will release it into the atmosphere here. And we have some water in the pipe network. I'll get rid of this, and we'll go back upstairs and we'll see how well that's doing. Okay, so it's not warming up very quickly, but it is staying above freezing right now. If we had probably some oxygen in there, it might work a little better but we're going to leave it at this for now i think i'm going to put a solar tracker on that there this way those radiators are always looking at the sun and it is warming up a little bit again there is no pressure or very much fluid in these pipes right now see it is going up just a tiny bit we've got four uh, 
radiators here. So let's go and inject some oxygen into the system because we've got lots of oxygen. This whole planet is made of oxygen. Here we are. So we just have enough in there to keep the water liquid and to pull the gaseous oxygen into a liquid state. So we're going to now close the door and we're going to make this one solid because I'm not going to make this mistake again, even though I just did. Close that door. There. Now we can turn the reactor on. And turn up the temperature. And we can see the temperature inside the reactor has already gone up to minus 30 degrees. The temperature in the room is still minus 32 degrees, 33.1, because it is a very big space. Now just make sure that everything's closed off. It is. And we are warming very quickly. So let's grab some ice from the environment, or at least pretend to. So we've mined some ice here. Let's throw this ice in. There we go. Now that'll contaminate some of our system with some nitrogen once it melts down there, which should be melting soon. And here's all the ice in here. Not yet melting because it's not yet cold enough, but it will melt as soon as the temperature upstairs, the, uh, the radiators upstairs, warm this above freezing, which is what it's doing. So this ice is actually at freezing and it freezes in the reactor at zero and it doesn't spend any time in there. So it's, it's fairly realistic that it wouldn't go much below freezing. And then as soon as it drops down here and it gets to about one degree, it then sublimates out. So this room here will always be about freezing temperature. And the room upstairs will not be able to get above freezing temperature because basically that's what the reactor does. And it's still going nicely here. So all this room is doing is doing the same job that the ice crusher will do. And again, you don't need enough power. I mean, you don't need much power to get it from just become, just become a solid to just become a liquid. Mostly, all it is is, is a conveyor for heat. Uh, technically speaking, you will have an increase to the amount of electricity that you use. So your COP value, if we were looking at real life stuff, because this is still just a heat pump. All we're doing is we're, we're using a solid in our pump as opposed to solely a liquid. And you could do that in real life too. You could use, our, well, let's, let's give an example. Let's say we are 500 years ago and the suction pump hasn't been created yet. Well, you put a bunch of rags on a rope and then you can, you know, soak up the water at the bottom of the of your mine, pull up the rags tied to a rope to the top and squeeze them out. The water represents the heat here and the solid is just representing the solid thing that is absorbing the heat. So the solid ice is a quote unquote absorbing the cold of the room, then it is uh, melting and driving off that quote-unquote cold. I know I'm saying this in the opposite way just because the human mind sort of works that way. So we're absorbing the cold of this room and then driving off the cold downstairs and we're using radiators to do that. If we plug the radiators directly into this room it would still warm up probably not as quickly and we are not using any electricity right now. The only electricity being used is to point those radiators. Those radiators, again, can be used to warm this room up directly. It won't warm it up as quickly as we're doing right now because that water uh, condensing and evaporating is giving it a lot of oomph. And because the water only needs to be close to freezing and we keep playing back and forth with one or two degrees, we can absorb a lot of energy from the sun and put it into this room more than we could with just the um, with just the radiators alone. And we don't need to use just uh, water in this setup. We can also use pollution, pollutant, probably don't use nitrous oxide because nitrous oxide has a habit of igniting on fire and we don't want it to ignite on fire. Also, we can throw some carbon dioxide in there. Let's do that now. So we'll grab some pollutant. I think this is pure pollutant. So we'll, we'll shove two pollutant down there. 
Okay, now we've got two pollutant down there, and then we'll shove two pure carbon dioxides down there. And unfortunately, I think we brought the pressure up there up, up a bit because the carbon dioxide didn't actually go through the didn't go through the pump. And now that's working even faster now that we have uh, gases that are even closer to the evaporation and freezing temperature of the, the whole system. And also because we just chucked a hunch up a bunch of carbon dioxide in our reactor. Also the different densities of the vapors of the liquids of the fluids is also helping with moving the uh, temperature around. The oxygen is much less dense than the water. Anyways, I'm going to go. See you later. And remember, most of the people who talk bullshit don't eat enough vegetables. You don't eat enough vegetables, you're not regular out of the back end, so the shit's got to come out the front end.